Well, we're going to see how well we make it through this video because Ellie is just over here on my right and uh, it's getting into things. So we're going to see how successful this video is today. So if you've never seen these videos before, this is a little mini series that I'm doing called How to Survive Traveling with Your Children Alone or with Your Child Alone. I'm going to be traveling with my 13 month old in two days and I'm nervous as hell. I've never done it before. We're flying um, to a different country and I'm doing it completely alone. So hopefully this is successful and you can learn something from this. So um, this video is basically me sharing all of my tips and things as I go along and learning. Um, this video we're going to be talking about travel documents and other helpful documents um, available to you, or that's not the, the right wording, but travel documents that you need and that you should have. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, it's not even 9.30 in the morning. I'm exhausted, but I got my coffee. All right, so this, this video is going to be, or all of these videos, is going to be talking about travel between Canada and the United States. So we are crossing a border, so it's considered international travel. But I don't know if the policies are all the same for every international destination. I'm sure they're not, but I'm sure that um, this basic information is the same all across the board. Uh, you might need a few things extra when you go further distances than when I'm going, but um, I'm sure your airline or your travel agent or your friends who've traveled to these destinations will tell you about it. But uh, make sure you have all your ducks in a row and you're not forgetting anything before you try to get on the plane. Okay, so two very important things that you're going to need, obviously, are your passports. doesn't matter how old your child is, when you cross the border, you need a passport for them. Now, I know with driving to the United States, it's different. Your children don't need a passport if they're under the age of 16. 16 and over, they require their own passport. But flying is different. And the other thing that you're going to need, it's highly recommended. I don't believe that it's absolutely mandatory, but I have heard of people being refused at the border for not having the document. So I highly suggest you get it in order to avoid that because you don't want to get on your plane and get to your connecting flight and go through the border process and then turn around and tell you that you don't have the document that they're looking for. So they're going to have to send you home. And that is a document of permission from your spouse, your partner, whoever, um, the baby's mother or father that gives you permission to take their child on this trip. Um, sorry if you can hear her toys, but um, it's just a basic document that you can draw up yourself just on the computer that says um, the person that's staying at home gives permission for the person that's flying to take their minor child out of the country or take them wherever. Try to include as much information as possible, the child's birthday, your address, your contact information, uh, where you're staying, everything so that if they have a problem with this document, they can get a hold of the right person to verify everything. Another thing that I highly recommend is get it notarized. Um, and that just basically removes the suspicion of a forged document. I don't think that it costs a whole lot to get it notarized. I know I for sure got my document notarized, but I have a friend who's a lawyer, so <laughs> I'm not sure how much it costs to get notarized. I think definitely under $100 for sure. I'm pretty sure anyways. Um, <clears throat> it's, like I said, just a simple basic document that it's a letter of permission pretty much. Another thing that I highly recommend um, is printing out all of your itinerary information from your, uh, your plane, your hotel information, your rental car information, anything that you have, print that out so you can have it with you in case you run into any problems at your hotel, you have all of that information with you or if you're forget what time your plane leaves at your connecting area or perhaps on the way back you have that itinerary with you you don't have any problems another thing is lists so I'm not going to show you everything on here but this is the cost of my trip in American funds so this is basically saying how much money I have to spend and what the basic minimum cost is to everything. So it has my luggage because they're charging me for luggage. That's 
$25 per direction and I believe there's a $4 tax on top of that per direction. So I have um, $58 just for freaking luggage. It makes me so mad. And it has the cost of my hotel. It has the cost of my train. It has the cost of um, my food, uh, the cost of my shuttle, things like this. This is just the basic minimum stuff so that I know that I'm not overspending on my um, shopping money, that I have my basic costs covered first before I go and spend extra money. That's a really important thing, I think, because I see something that I really want. I'm like, oh, yes, I, I have this money. I can buy it. And then I've, like, screwed myself. So um, this is a must, especially for me. And it lets you know that you're... Um, how much money you have to save and plan for and things like that. The next thing I have is um, a to pack list and I have one for me, uh, one for Ellie and the one for the carry-on. So I will go over um, what's in our luggage probably most likely tomorrow because we're leaving in two days. So I'm a little, I'm a little stressed about it. And now I have to go. So I will, um, I'll upload this as soon as we get the internet hooked up. We just moved, so the internet guy is supposed to come today. And then tomorrow, I will film my packing video. That's exciting. I can't believe I'm leaving in two days. Talk to you guys later. Bye.